Hey, this is Troy from Planet 76. We've got some really good Sixers focused content coming your way today. Make sure you subscribe to the pod so you can be in the know when we release new content. Enjoy the show. Welcome everyone to Planet 76 Podcast. My name is Michael. Troy alongside me as well. We've been slacking a little bit. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna I'm gonna call us both out a little bit here. Um, but if you're a, if you have been sticking with us throughout the summer, we appreciate it. We salute you. It, yes, we do definitely. Um, we're gonna have more, obviously we're gonna have a little more consistent uploading during the season. We're still a bit away from the beginning of the Sixers season, but we're gonna have more consistent uploads during the season. So we appreciate you all for sticking with us. Since we've last been on, Joel Embiid is now a gold medalist Olympic champ. So that's something exciting that we can all talk about and kind of bask in the glory of. The United States Olympic team beat France on Saturday. I think the final score was 93-84. And obviously Joel Embiid had some rough patches in the Olympics. He never played in the Olympics before. Having to adjust to FIBA rules is not something that's easy for somebody who's never played in FIBA, FIBA before. Even guys who have played in FIBA, there's there's a learning curve, especially when you're so used to NBA play. There's a learning curve. You got to adjust to the way FIBA rules work, the way Euro League plays basketball, or I should say, the way overseas basketball works. So he had his rough patches, but at the end of the day, he was pretty much the best player on Team USA outside of LeBron James. I think Joel Embiid was the best player on Team USA. I think he is the best player on Team USA. Um, especially when you just consider the fact that Giannis doesn't play for Team USA. Nikola Jokic doesn't play for Team USA. Luka Doncic doesn't play for Team USA. And I think that's... You can you can say how... You can call it however level of importance you want, but I think it's noteworthy being the best player on a gold medalist team, on a yeah. team that wins the gold medal. Obviously, it's not an NBA championship, that's coming a little sooner than some people may like. That, that's that's coming soon, but yes, nonetheless, um, I'm done. I, I just I gotta catch myself. I just start rambling. So yeah, dude, it's good. So it's let, let's. Over. It's yeah. our gold medalist, man. Yeah, it's a lot to yeah. talk about there. So yeah, shout out to Joel. Uh, he definitely, you know, I didn't catch a ton of the Olympics, but right. I know we were, you know, losing to Jokic and company. Um, mm-hmm early fourth even down double digits and then joel made a very big impact on that game yeah. uh down the stretch in the fourth and you know it's kind of interesting with i mean go figure with how good this team is kind of guys had their moments and um you know it's not like your best player has to play amazing every night if you're right. on a team like that um steph curry obviously did <coughs> pretty incredible things over the last couple games and uh yeah i mean that, that team should win and they did win. So <laughs> let's be thankful that <laughs> they did. Too um, close, in my opinion, but yeah, it's a win. We'll take it. It is. Obviously. It is a little so. too close. But basketball's about you know. Yep. Regardless, even if there's names you don't know, like these guys play professional basketball. Right. I mean, y- again, regardless, they still should win. Yeah. But, and they did. Sure. Let's just call it that. They did win, um, and we're happy about it. But anyway, I think on this episode, episode one fifty seven. Is that what I just said earlier? Is mm-hmm. that what I said to you? 157? Yep. Yep. Uh, we're going to be kind of just talking quickly about uh, this Sixers big three um, that we have in Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and now Paul George. Uh, we've talked a lot about George over the last few weeks, and deservingly so. And sure. um, you know now we're pushing up on uh, you know mid-August already. Summer's flying by, and we kind of, I mean, much we might like the summer, we like that as, fu- as basketball fans, because that means we're getting closer to the mm-hmm. Sixers season, and um, you know, content that's going to be focused on, you know, preseason and, and what have you. But um, I'll just say this, and then I kind of want to toss it to you, but the big three that we have, if you go based off of their point-per-game totals a season ago, now I get Joel missed a lot of time. Um, Tyrese missed some, some time a little bit and kind of carried a lot of load without Joel, and maybe his points were a little inflated because of that, and whatever you want to say. Combined – these guys put up an absurd 83.2 points per game. <laughs> the three of them together. You throw in Joel with 34, 35, Maxi with 25.9, I think, and then Paul George around 22 points a game last year in L.A. I mean, that's insane. That's insane. 83 points a game from these two a season mm-hmm. ago. Not saying it's going to equal that <laughs> next year because they're on the same team, but 
Um, pretty wild stuff. What is that? Just that alone. We'll get into some more details, but that alone, scoring wise, what does that tell you about this <laughs> about this big three that we do have now in Philly? Well, it tells you. I mean, in in short, they can score and they can do it really well, really efficiently. And I think the Sixers now have the best big three in the NBA. I don't think it's close. I don't really think many teams have three players who are as talented as as Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey, and Paul George. I think they are kind of keeping the era of the big three alive, and that was an era that was kind of dying because teams were shifting more towards let's just have our two stars and let's build around them. And technically the Sixers are still in that mold. They're still kind of building in that frame of let's build around our two stars because – like I mentioned last episode, like Paul George, he's still a star level player in this league, obviously, but he's more of a complimentary piece right now in, in this stage of his career. He's more of a complimentary piece to Maxine and Bede. He's the third guy. We talked about yeah. it before in, in, in great length. He's the third guy on this team. He's kind of a complimentary piece more so that he is like, mm -hmm. what's the... What's that's the word a, that's a pretty for? good complimentary like, um, piece, mind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. Um, but but I don't disagree. Yeah, yeah, but still, it's it's he is is more of a is more so a complimentary piece now. He's not your number one. He's not your alpha, if you will. That's yep. Joel Embiid. Paul George is in a place now in his career where he can really complement two stars very well, and him and P, him and Kawhi. Both kind of played similarly. Their skill set's kind of redundant. So he isn't. He wasn't necessarily complimenting the Clippers. He was more so their star, their one A, one B kind of player. But with the Sixers, he's kind of like their level two player. I mean, it's it's kind of crazy to say, but the way the Sixers are right now, that's that's just what he. That's what he's going to be doing. He's not going to be Clippers Paul George anymore. He's transitioning into a new stage in his career as a player and i'm it's 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 obviously going to be a hybrid of a lot of the different roles he's had with different teams uh -huh. but he's more so going to be a complimentary piece than he is going to be your main guy on a on a team right hold that thought okay. don't let me forget to come back to that do not okay. I, have a question I for might you forget after, that, after this <laughs> um i'm hoping i don't because because that's as much as this is a big three, yeah. because because name alone his name's Paul George we know mm -hmm. him like he's he's been been <laughs> been there done that a long time in this league. Um, that is a very very interesting point and I think yeah. that bodes well for just again speaking to depth that this team has mm -hmm. because when he's your third guy you you already you're already out the gate ahead of other teams because he's your third guy as yep. far as you know, depth pieces. Um, my question is, how do you see that unfolding? Because it is an adjustment. Now, again, like Paul George, um, actually before my question, this was what I really wanted to say, but um, if you're if you're Paul George, you haven't played with Joel Embiid. You haven't played right. with anybody like Joel Embiid. Nope. You can say that for any person that has never played on the Sixers, right? They've never played with anyone like Joel Embiid mm -hmm. before. Um, and I think that's a great point about Kawhi Leonard because they're you know same, same size, both talented offensively and defensively in, in similar ways. And they're not necessarily complementary to each other. We, we saw that. They didn't get to where they really wanted right. to go in L.A. together, and um, that could be a reason why. But now you have Paul George going to a place in his career where he's never played with an elite, elite, all-world, one of the best players in the world as a center. Um, and has he really played with anybody like Tyrese Maxey? And now he's doing it at the same time. Um, you know, a, a young rising star who can really shoot the ball well and is super quick in transition and I mean certainly he's played with some quick fast guards over his long <laughs> NBA career but like Tyrese Maxey's pretty unique as well so my question stemming from that is like how how do you see it unfolding like are there going to be I mean I'm sure there's going to be some growing pains hmm. early in the season and 
what are some things maybe to be aware of for us to say, you know what, that might be just part of this process as as Paul George gets used to it. Sure. Or what are some things that you think are just going to come naturally to him because he's, he's been there, done that, been in the NBA, been on many different teams, played with a lot of different players, and it's just going to come easy to him playing alongside these guys. And it's going to be even better, again, going back to your point that he's a complimentary piece. It is going to be easy for him, but there is still going to be a learning curve because kind of like, kind of like what you mentioned, Paul George has never been in a situation where he's played with two players that were arguably better than him. Now, you could say that for the past, I guess, since Harden got to the Clippers six right. months, there were times where Harden was playing better than George, and there were times, well, Kawhi is better than PG. Not even there were times. Kawhi is just straight up a better player. Yeah. But I don't think you could say, I don't think you could say, kind of like what you said too, he he's played with two players like Maxine and Bede because right. yes, there's going to be an adjustment period, but at the same time, I think it's going to be a lot easier for him because he's had so many roles already in the NBA, but also because they demand so much attention from the, from opposing defenses. Whereas yes, Harden and Kawhi do, but with Embiid alone, it's just so much like the amount of attention he's drawing is just so much. It's just a totally different kind of level of attention because he's just like him being on the court. You have to go guard him. Harden, Harden, a lot of teams aren't like, oh, my gosh, we got to go guard this guy. They'll send a guy out there. They'll send a, a good perimeter defender out there to guard him. And B, it's like you have to commit two to three defenders to go guard him. And in that part, it makes it easier for Paul George because he's never played with a guy like that with the exception of maybe Russell Westbrook and OKC because Russell Westbrook and OKC does have a lot, of, did have a lot of similarities to current day Joel Embiid in that he also commands so much attention from defenses mm -hmm. because he can basically get to the basket whenever he wants. And Embiid is kind of similar. It's it's there are a lot of differences. Obviously, I'm not comparing the two, okay. saying one's better than the other. But I'm saying there are a lot Gravity of similarities. Wise. There. Yeah, that's you stole the word right from me. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. That's that's the word right there. Yeah. And 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 with Embiid though, he he gives Paul George the opportunity to have the ball more than Paul George would have had with Russell Westbrook, because with Russell Westbrook he needed the ball way more. Whereas Joel Embiid he doesn't need the ball as much, so he's a lot more malleable, which in turn helps Paul George become more malleable because then he can play off of Joel Embiid. And it's a lot more seamless of a fit. Obviously, he's going to have to adjust to that third fiddle more so than in L.A. Because a lot of times, like I said before, he was one or he was two. But in, in Philadelphia, he's pretty much going to be consistently the three. Unless Embiid is, is injured or misses some games. So there is going to be a little bit of a learning curve. I think it's going to be... It's going to take time. Like, there's 82 regular season games. I wouldn't be surprised if they take 15, 20 games and really figure it out and really experiment with, all right, what's Paul George's role really going to be offensively? What's he really going to do defensively? What is he like in this lineup with Embiid? What about without Embiid? What about him plus the bench? It's going to be a learning curve. And as it would be with any star that comes to Philly, especially with the core they have now with Embiid, Maxi plus Ubre Lowry, and who else do they bring back? Drummond, I guess technically, technically Drummond because yeah. he's he's <laughs> technically back too. Yep, he is. He's back. We're happy to have him back. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll throw that in there, but yeah, it's <sighs> the thing about Paul Jordan. Now, again, you have a true wing in yeah. him. You have a. The center of all centers in Joel Embiid, and then you got a guy like Max who just gets better every single year. Yeah, um, I think the complement to each other, sh for the most part, should come naturally. Um, now, again, there's this whole thing of you know Paul George. Maybe maybe he's taking a few less shots. Maybe he's doing a little less of this, that, whatever. But um, like he knows that he's he, he knows what he signed up for. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Um, <laughs> and he's 
I think the looks, hopefully, the hope is because of the gravity around Joel Embiid, the, the looks that he can get um, are going to be cleaner, are going to be easier. He's not going to mm-hmm. have to force many. He, and and yeah. by the way, he shot almost eight threes a game last season. Oh, and by the way, that he shot his highest percentage from three in his career as he did last season. Mm-hmm. I get it was literally by like a decimal point. Hey, a couple it counts. But, hey, we'll take it. He, he has not shot better from three than he did a season ago, and that's a fact. Um, and that could really go up because of the looks that he can get. I mean, how many mm-hmm. times have we yelled at Tobias Harris for not taking that open three that he gets? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Paul George is going to get open looks more than he has in his career, we can assume, mm-hmm. uh, because of what this team has around him and around um, Joel Embiid and, and with Tyrese. So... Um, I, I think for the most part it should come naturally. I think maybe the one kind of growing pain, not just relating to Paul George and the mm-hmm. other um, and our two stars, is sure. just the fact that it's a whole new team. Like this is very retooled. You just yeah. named, you know Kelly Oubre, Kyle Lowry, but like this is a very new look team, mm-hmm. and across the board it's going to take some time. Um, I mean we saw that. I don't know why this comes to my mind from years and years ago but like when Bosch and Wade and LeBron teamed up they struggled I think that first season out the gate yeah if I remember correctly could be making that up but like part of that's it. just because of the growing pains of mm-hmm. getting used to playing with each other um what else you got on these on these three specifically um I do you agree you think it, it for the most or Okay, if you agree mm-hmm. that it should come naturally for Paul George with these two, is it something in Paul George that makes you agree with it? It's going to come naturally, or is it just because of how dynamic Joel and Tyrese are? I think it's sense. yeah. I think it's a little bit of both. I think because Paul George's skill set lends really well to playing alongside guys who can generate a lot of attention from defenses. I feel like because his skill set lends so well to that, that it's going to work. It's going to be much more seamless of a fit. And it's going to be much more seamless of a transition to Philly's offense. And he's not going to have to take as long to adjust. It's not going to be as big of a barrier for him to adjust. Because, again, I mean, you, you can't say it enough. Paul George hasn't had the luxury of playing against, I'm sorry, with two players that draw as much attention as Embiid and Maxi do, especially Maxi from the perimeter. You mentioned it earlier. What guy has Paul George played with that's hitting 39% of his threes on like seven attempts a game? I mean, that's that's like a mini Steph Curry. He hasn't ever played with anyone like that. Yeah. He hasn't, and I, 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 again, we're we're optimistic, and mm-hmm. we we hope that we're warranted in that, and I think there's reason to be. Oh yeah, are you kidding um, me? And I, I've said it. I think I said it when we got him. Like Paul George, I've always really liked watching because he's very, very smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, just the game that he plays, he's he's fun to watch. Um, he never looks lost. Mm-hmm. Um, he's just got a very smooth offensive game that I think can plug and play into into most systems he's, he's going to get his i mean we know that and we know what he brings defensively even you know toward the back half of his career now um so all right well, let's touch on defensively and then we can wrap it up mm-hmm. but um how do you how do you see that working paul george and joel Embiid on the floor a lot together um two guys that have made a name for themselves in a lot of different ways on the defensive end how, how do you see that playing I think that works really well, too, because I think for a couple of reasons, one being that on defense, Joel Embiid doesn't have to do a whole lot more than he's capable of doing, and he can really just sit back at the basket and protect the paint and and, and stay at the rim so Paul George can kind of be a roamer and kind of go out, guard the opposing team's best player, second best player, third best player, whatever, and then he can also go out and kind of just roam on the wing. I don't know if you are super familiar with like the way Giannis plays defense. Like obviously we know Giannis is a really good defender, but the way he plays defense is he kind of roams around around the the baseline on the wing because Brooke Lopez is in the paint or Bobby Portis is in the paint, protecting the basket, protecting the rim. 
Rihanna's kind of roams and he kind of just waits and helps and he kind of just interrupts and blows up plays. And I'm not saying Paul George is Giannis. I really want to make that clear. What I'm saying is that he can kind of play a similar defensive roaming role where he can kind of just park himself on the on the wing or on the on, uh, by the baseline in the corner on defense and just kind of blow up plays defensively, get in passing lanes, interrupt pick and rolls, be kind of a defensive roamer slash playmaker in that he's just blowing up everything he's just blowing up plays he's just stopping plays before they happen he's getting in passing lanes and that like you you aren't gonna be like all right paul george go out and guard the opposing team's best player and give me 30 a night because that's just (laughs) super taxing on him at this point in his career Uh and the sixers don't even need that from him that it's crazy like he doesn't have to he he doesn't need to do it and because he doesn't, the Sixers don't expect that from him. They're not going to ask him to do that, and, and nor should they. Mm-hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah, I think, I, I still think he's got a lot left in the tank, mm-hmm. even on the defensive end. Oh, yeah. And um, I'm he's, excited to see that. He's still one of the league's, like, very good perimeter defenders. People are making it out to be, like, some bomb defensively, but that's just not the case. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, every time somebody goes to the Sixers... Every other NBA fan is like, he stinks, he sucks. But two months Lost. prior, they were just they had nothing but good things to say about that player. Like, oh, they, they find out he went. To, they find out he went to the Sixers. Oh my gosh, he sucks. He's horrible. And it's like <laughs> you weren't saying that a month ago. What, what happened? All right, last thing. I, I think I said the last thing was the last thing, but this okay. is actually the last thing. <laughs> So Paul George, just looking at some numbers, kind of curious, you know, we know things are going to be a little different, but I'm wondering how different they'll be. I'm wondering what kind of prediction you have regarding this. Okay. So um, the last two years in L.A., he got up eight, almost 18 shots a game from the floor, and then last season uh, just about one less. He got about 17. Um, both seasons he was just under eight threes a game. How do you see that changing as far as his looks? Do you want the same amount of threes? Do you think he's going to get a couple less? Could he get a couple more? Yeah. Is it going to be the same? Do you think the field goals are going to be a tick down? You know, maybe it's maybe it's closer to 14, 15. Mm-hmm. Um, your thoughts on that? Well, I definitely think his field goals could go down overall. I don't know if it's going to be threes or twos. Right. I'm hoping those threes stay the same. I'm hoping it's somewhere in the range of seven, eight, and nine per game. Yeah. I agree. And truthfully, I don't really see a reason why he c- can't do that, won't do that. He's going to get the looks. Will he take threes is the question we're going to have to ask. But I don't see why he wouldn't. I mean, he's just going to have so many open threes. I don't know why he wouldn't take them. So I don't see the field goals. I, I don't see the f- the three-pointers dipping much. Maybe he takes one or two less field goals per game, and those mm-hmm. become threes, or he just flat out takes less free uh field goal attempts per game yeah and he he could be staring in the face his lowest field goal output per game that he's had in a a long time um look at you know 2014-15 he played six games i think that's obviously the year that he had that crazy injury um and then but since then you know he's been 18 attempts 18 attempts 17, 21, 16, yeah. almost 18, 20, 21, 18, and 17. And that could get down to about 15, 14. It could happen. But I, I think what you said is right. I, I mean, I would love for that his three-point totals to still be around seven or eight because I think that's a big difference. We already talked about this uh, probably at length in a previous episode. And if you haven't heard that, you should go check it out. But, like, Facts. you know, a lot of times we think that Oh, Sixers don't have enough shooting. They don't have enough shooting. They don't have enough shooting. But when you think about it, two of their big three players are elite at shooting the basketball. Yep. And so, like a lot of times, you think shooter, you think one dimensional. Um, Paul George isn't one dimensional. That's not all that he <laughs> brings to the table. It's one of many things he brings to the table, right. and we're gonna need him to do that. And that's that's just a big difference from you know it's a breath of fresh air from what we're used to seeing, where a lot of times in the past the Sixers role players 
have been those guys that you're relying yeah. on to get on some shots. But now you're looking at another guy alongside Tyrese Maxey, who's one of your best players, who is now going to jack up a lot of threes. And that's what you need in today's yeah. NBA. So I, I really, I think that's kind of an underrated part of this whole thing is that Paul George is going to get them up. And meaning that we don't, that the more that Paul George shoots threes, the less that the guys off the bench have to. Exactly. If that makes Takes sense. Pressure right? off you don't need, too. you don't need Kyle Korver coming off the bench. You don't need JJ yep. Redick. You don't need Seth Curry. You have Paul exactly. George is going to get him up for those guys instead. So, uh, that's all I'll say. Anything else you got to say closing out this short little one episode 157? Nope. I'm good. And, I mean, really, like, I could talk about this for for an hour. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if any of you would listen to an hour-long podcast of this, but I could talk for an hour. I won't because we're ending the episode, <laughs> but I could. But Well, um, we got hey, we got to space out the content right. as the summer yes. continues, as we continue to grind through the summer. Anyway, uh, it's, this is Planet 76. As you heard, this is episode 157, and uh, we will see you next time on Planet 76. Peace. You just listened to an episode of the Planet 76 podcast. Hey, we appreciate you joining us for this episode. Whatever platform you're on, why don't you hit that subscribe button for us, and we'll see you next time.